Welcome to the Future of Triple E channel. I am Siddhartan. We are discussing the speed control methods of three phase induction motor. In the last video, we have discussed closed loop IF control using six step current source inverter. In this video, let's see the circuit diagram of six step current source inverter. Usually, three phase current source inverter will have six thyristors, and thyristors are used as switching device. Since we are using thyristors in current source inverter, we need a separate commutation circuit to turn off, that is, to reverse bias the thyristors. Before seeing the commutation circuit, let's see why current source inverters are using thyristors. Due to switching actions of thyristors, there will be a large rate of change of phase currents, and hence the motor leakage inductance will produce sharp spikes in the phase voltages. To avoid this, we generally provide a capacitor bank in current source inverter. So here is the key for us. If we are properly relocating the capacitors in the capacitor bank, then it can be used to reduce the voltage spikes and it can also be used to turn off, that is to reverse bias the thyristors. This is the reason most of the current source inverters you are seeing will be made up of thyristors. But nowadays, Current source inverters using self-controlled switches such as GTOs, IGBTs, MOSFETs are gaining popularity. Okay, now let's see the most commonly used auto-sequentially commutated current source inverter. Here, a series inductor is to provide stiff current source as opposed to the stiff voltage source in voltage source inverter. Six thyristors are used to perform the function of switches. Six capacitors are used for dual purpose. First, it is used to reduce the voltage spikes during the transition of current. And second, it is used to reverse bias the thyristors, that is to commutate the thyristors. Six diodes are used to isolate the capacitors from load. Without these diodes, charge in the capacitors would discharge through loads. So proper commutation may not happen. In the steady state, the sequence of events will be identical at each switching. So let's examine the inverter operation for one switching. Thyristors are numbered in accordance with sequence in which they are fired. Now consider thyristor T1 and T2 are conducting initially. Then source current I will flow through the path of thyristor T1, diode D1, phase A, phase C, diode D2, thyristor T2 and back to the input source. Capacitor C1 and C5 will now charge with the polarity as shown. When thyristor T3 turned on, then full voltage of capacitor C1 is applied to reverse bias the thyristor T1 through T3 and hence thyristor T1 turned off. Reverse biasing means negative potential to anode and positive potential to cathode of thyristor. Now source current I will flow through the path of thyristor T3 parallel circuit formed by C1 and C3 and C5 in series, diode D1, phase A, phase C, diode D2, thyristor T2 and back to the input source. Note that the phase current here is not changed and still it is from phase A to phase C. This is because diode D3 is not conducting and it is reverse biased by capacitor C1. But the current now passing through the parallel combination of C1 and C3 and C5 in series linearly reverses the voltage of capacitor C1 until it is sufficient to forward bias the diode D3. Once diode D3 conducts, the source current I will flow through the path of thyristor T3, diode D3, phase B, phase C, diode D2, thyristor T2 and back to the input source. Note that rate of change of current from phase A to phase B is determined by the value of capacitors. Because of these capacitors, there will be a gradual transfer of current and hence can avoid voltage spikes. During the current transfer, capacitor C1 charged with the right plate positive and capacitor C3 is charged with the left plate positive as shown. It is also important to note that the polarity of voltage in capacitor C3 will reverse bias the thyristor T3 when thyristor T5 is turned on. That is, 
for next commutation in the upper thigh rister group. So the operation continues. The idealized output current waveforms of six step current source inverter are similar to voltage waveform in voltage source inverter. And frequency control is done by varying the time period of one cycle as we seen in voltage source inverter. Phase voltage VAN will be sinusoidal and produce voltage spikes during the transition of current IA. This voltage spikes can reduce by having large value of capacitors. But if you use large value of capacitors, then time required for the current transfer will decrease, which in turn will decrease the frequency range of the inverter and hence the speed range of the motor. So usually induction motor with low leakage inductance is preferred for current source inverter. The drawback of current source inverter is its quasi square wave current waveform. This current produces pulsating torque and motor will rotate in jerks at low speed. To overcome this, pulse width modulation of current can be used. This can reduce the pulsating torque and also it can improve the performance of the motor. To understand the pulse width modulation of current source inverter, please refer this IEEE paper. Ok, in the next video, let's see the rotor resistance control used in slip ring induction motor. You can download this PPT and PDF from the link given in the description. Please subscribe to my channel, have a smile and have a good day.